call in favor. Kiss 100 This is Colin Favor on Kiss 100 FM. My very special guest tonight is Larry Hurd from Chicago. Hi, Larry. Welcome Hi, to Colin. Kiss. I'm glad to be here again. You've been um, around for a good many years now. How did you uh, first get involved with making music? Well, making music? I, um, yeah, making been playing, music. Um, I started playing drums when I was about 17. That was my start into the musical arena. Um, I was just playing in like jazz groups, R&B groups, rock groups, what have you, playing drums. And uh, Later on in about 1984, 85, I decided to take up, you know, playing synthesizers. Uh-huh. Mm. Were you actually uh, involved in jazz bands at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And touring around the country? Well, around like the Midwest in the States, you know. So um, you were just playing like freeform jazz? Yeah, and um, uh, cover tunes, other people's material and some original material. So when and how did uh, Fingers Inc. come together? Was that the first actual uh, house? Yeah. Um, I had met Robert Owens through a friend who DJ. Uh, Robert was a DJ also at the time, um, and he just basically introduced us. And Robert told me that he wrote lyrics and uh, songs, and we exchanged numbers, and we just got together. And, you know, tried to work on some things. It just really worked out real good. Uh huh. And uh, what was the first thing you came up with? Well, the first thing we came up with was a path actually because the mystery of love had been done already and then you know that because there's like a couple of versions actually before the dj and the national version right and we added robert's voice on that version a uh, mystery of love is the uh, first track we're going to play tonight um how did you actually link up with dj international um i don't know exactly how i hooked up with them uh I think it might have been through some friends also who were saying this, this new label, you know, check them out and what have you. Okay, we'll take a listen to Mystery of Love. There's a moment in my life when y'all must be able to find Mystery, mystery of love, love, love. Mr. Love, my very special guest tonight, Larry Heard. Um, how did Mr. Fingers come about? Was that the next uh, project? No, Mr. Fingers was actually the first project. Ah, the first project. Um, uh, 
Um, the name originated just from something my, my little brothers used to say around the house and talk about my fingers. They say they were long and they would call me Loose Fingers and Mr. Fingers, you know. So I just stuck with that, basically. And uh, did Washing Machine and Can You Feel It come out of uh, your home? Did you make those up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sure what did. equipment did you have at the time? Hmm, what did I have? I had a DX7, a Roland Jupiter 6, and a, a Juno 6 Roland. So what time, uh, about what time uh, period was this? Were you, were you hanging out in clubs at the time in Chicago? Um, not actually, because I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do it, because I was like trying to learn keyboards after work, because I was working a full-time job also at that time. So um, I just come home and just basically freestyle and, you know, do whatever I felt. You know. And uh, you ended up having bad experiences with labels in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, why was this? Why was it? I don't exactly know. Uh, they didn't actually pay you for the work? Or? Mm, not what we were entitled to, no. We had a little something. Okay, we're going to listen to uh, Washing Machine. Mr. Fingers and Washing Machine, and uh, next track we're going to listen to, Can You Feel It? Tell me how that came about. Can You Feel It? I just, just basically came up with, the. I started with some chords and added a little simple bass line to it, and I asked a, a friend of mine, you know, what should I call it, because I didn't know what to call the track, and he just said, Can You Feel It? And, you didn't and I really stuck really, with that. You didn't know it was going to turn into a, a genuine classic at the time? No. <laughs> A house anthem, let's hear it. Present a Pisces crisis at the warehouse Nathan Way, Plumstead, SE28, on Friday the 13th of March, 10 p.m. until 8 a.m. 12 squid on the door. 
DJs of the night, Groove Rider, Dave Angel, Mickey Thin, Colin Dale, Face and Dad, Kid Bachelor, Mark Moore and many more. Live PAs by Saffron. Happy birthday, Julian and Paul. If you want to eat with the head bomb and looks like he opens bars with his teeth, eat well and have fun at Cafe Sol and Greenwich. From enchiladas to chunky steaks and burgers washed down with imported beers. Thursday and Friday nights, talk nice to the slammer girl and get your third tequila free. Cafe Sol, open midday to midnight on Nelson Road, Greenwich. What does vivid mean? Until 9am every Friday, it means two floors of the best sounds around London. On level one, DJs including Rhythm Doctor, Phil Perry and Breeze bring your solid garage and Euro house sure to please. On level two, you're guaranteed to sweat as DJs rap, pipe, squirrel, Tamsin and more serve up a generous helping of techno, bass and bleach. So get to Vivid at the Paradise, 1 to 5 Parkville Street, Islington, every Friday, 11pm to 9am. The price at the door is only £10. One of the biggest rave operations yet involving ferry companies, European agents and a massive venue in France is about to be unveiled. Details on 081 801 0644. This is Colin Favor on uh, KISS 100 FM, my special guest tonight, Larry Hurd from Chicago. Are you still based in Chicago? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. How did you um, link up with Jack Tracks in the UK? Jack Tracks, they basically had came over to the States um, looking to license material and things like that. And I just, they contacted me and we talked and we decided to get a project together with them. And uh, that was a double album that came out of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did that sell? Well, I'm not exactly sure how it sold. Because <laughs> that turned out to be another sour deal. Oh, Unfortunately, dear. it didn't work out. You uh, began Alleviated Records in 1987. Yeah? No, Alleviated began with Mystery of Love. Oh, right. That was the original label that Mystery of Love came out of. Uh, well, I never saw that one. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rare. DJ International was uh, where I saw it. Mm -hmm. So Alleviated actually started a long time before, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so we probably would have done better if we stuck with Alleviated. Yeah, I don't think we're going to go on to some of the other labels. And what was the first uh, recording on Alleviated? Mystery Love. Right. And then in 87? No, uh, actually in 86, a Disco D tracks came out and Bring Down the Walls was originally on. Um, right that label but they couldn't have got very far outside of chicago no it was, I, it was basically out of my pocket so my pocket was only so deep so i could only do a limited amount of pressing right you know, with that label. so the reason i say 87 is because uh, you probably got wider distribution from that time on because mm -hmm. yeah. that's when the records started getting in the stores in london yeah. mm -hmm. so i i'm strong but was that quite a big seller we did a couple of thousand copies it wasn't like a platinum or gold record you know old enough to keep things going and record the next record and what have you. Does Alleviated still exist? Yeah, it's still around. I mean, it's uh, sort of stagnant right now, just trying to get a few things together where I can uh, put some artists out on that label, you know, mm -hmm. have some sort of outlet for Chicago area talent. You know. Is it easy getting a label distributed in America? No, <laughs> not at all. What sort of uh, obstacles do you hit? Well, the same thing, the financial thing. I mean, you could have your initial money to do your pressing with, but then it takes so long to receive money back from stores and distributors that you can't keep up with the demand, you know. Sure. Especially if you're coming, you're taking everything out of your pocket at one time to do it initially. You don't really have anything else to go back and press with until the money comes back from the distributor. Well, the next track we're going to hear is Distant Planet. Tell me about this. Distant Planet. How did that happen? <laughs> I think I just basically came up with the track and then um, Harry and Robert just came in and just sort of ad-libbed over it until we came up with the concept of the distant planet and they arranged how they wanted to do it. You know, it was a pretty simple process. Fingers Inc. and Distant Planet.
That's Fingers Inc, Distant Planet, my special guest tonight, Larry Heard from Chicago. 